Good afternoon, this is Nicholas from Gandora Gaming, and I have a leader I want to discuss with you all today, that being Uta. Uh, Uta is a film leader released back in set one, and she has not seen any play. Uh, she is a very underrated leader, and I'm going to go over her effects. So she's a five cost red, and it basically says once a turn, you may rest one dawn, give a vanilla monster 2,000 power this turn. Now, the reason why that is actually pretty decent is honestly you're just using one dawn to uh, basically give a character 2000 plus power so you're basically doing a plus one now the reason why she was looked at as really bad was vanilla uh well red at the time didn't really have that many vanilla monsters not to mention red had zoro who was literally one of the best leaders to this day and it just wasn't possible to really play Uta to her full ability. So she was looked at as a very shitty leader. Actually, one of the worst leaders in the game. And no one's actually experimented with her since. So now that we're entering set 4, I feel like we should actually go over what Uta can do in the modern, modern game. So I'm trying out this build. I'm still testing with it, so bear with me. I am trying two shanks. Uh, Shanks is just for lore reasons. This card could be replaced with anything. I had two flex spots, and I thought, well, this guy is a vanilla. He's 8 cost, so you use her ability. He'll become a 10,000, uh, 12,000 attack 8 cost, which isn't bad. Not to mention he has a counter, so worse goes to worse, you discard him from hand. But, uh, I actually realized by set 3, there's actually a strong line of vanillas that you can play in the game. That being the Whitebeard Pirates. So I actually think the best way to play Uta is with the Whitebeard Vanillas. There's actually a good amount of them. So we have Little Wars Jr. He is a 7 cost, 9,000 attack. So if you use Uta's ability, which is just resting on Dawn to give a Vanilla 2,000 power, this guy for a 7 cost becomes 1,100 attack, which is absolutely gigantic. Uh, we also have Fatch. Fatch is another big boy. He is a 8,000 attack, 6 cost. You use Uta's ability, he becomes a 10,000 attack beat stick, which is pretty huge for a 6 drop. Same thing goes for King Drew. Uh, King Drew will become a 9,000 beat stick. He's a 5 cost, 1,000 counter. So worst comes to worst, there are always counters in your hand. Every monster has a counter, so you can't just discard them to protect yourself. We're also playing Atmos. Now Atmos is a... For uh, 4 cost 6,000, which is really, really good. Use Uta's ability. He goes to 8k. Really, really solid card there. Same thing goes for Speed Jill uh, or Speed Jew. I'm not really sure how to pronounce his name, but again, another 4 cost. Give, use Uta's ability. He becomes a 6k, uh, 8k, which is really, really good. Now for actually effect monsters. We're all playing Jozu just because he's a 2,000 counter that is searchable. Uh, like I said, the White Beard Pirates do have some of the best searchers in the game. So I felt like, hey, this is a pretty powerful 2k counter, which is really, really good. We're also playing the original Marco. Uh, this is actually from the starter, uh, some set one, my bad. And I'm actually happy that we can actually play Marco. This is actually back when Vanillas only had this much screen for some reason. Uh, he has no text, but for some reason they couldn't just give him a full screen like these guys do. Which is really, really weird. But uh, he's a 3 cost, so use uh, her ability on him. He goes a 7k 3 cost, which is absolutely huge. Same thing goes for our Sharky boy, Namnut, he right here. Same thing goes for him. A 7,000 3 cost is absolutely huge. Uh, we also play in the other monster. We're playing Fusa. He's actually a blocker, so we do have some protection. Plus, he's a 2 cost, so he isn't that big of a deal. We're also playing Izo because every card you see besides these two shanks is a Whitebeard Pirate. So, this card looks at the top 5 cards of your deck. Add a Whitebeard Pirate other than Izo to your hand. And then place the rest of the bottom of the deck. Really, really solid card. We're also playing Fiery Doll. Uh, Fiery Doll that says, hey, uh, your leader gains 2,000 power during this turn. Uh, which is really, really good. I wish this was a counter. But the fact that we just use two costs and make her a 9k on attacking is absolutely insane. And this helps you push. You're already playing all these big dudes. Why not have her being a big guy? And then finally, we have... The Whitebeard Pirates. This is a search card. It is a Rota for the deck. And overall, it's just a really, really good card in general. So this is what I'm experimenting with you with the Whitebeard Pirates. Uh, I think it's the best vanilla package for red. The fact that there's so many high, big level cost monsters. And the fact that Uta can just use her ability to plus them even bigger. 
is actually kind of interesting. Now, is this the best red deck? Absolutely not. But do I think this is going to be a spicy tech option? Maybe. I don't know. I kind of want to test this out. I don't think enough people are experimenting with Uta as a leader to see. But I think this is probably one of the better versions you can play of her. Just play a whole bunch of really powerful vanillas that are searchable, that have counter, so that you're always going to have counter in your hand. That's one of the one things I really like about this deck. Every monster has a counter, which is absolutely good. Um, if you want, you could probably switch out one of these shanks for a white beard. And uh, yeah, you're all set. This is actually a really, really cool white beard deck. But uh, that's all I got to say about this video. I hope you all enjoy. Don't do anything stupid. And I'll see you all in the next one. Bye bye Also, one more thing, actually, before I go. This deck costs like five bucks to build. Every one of these monsters is less than like 10 cents. Ezos might be the most expensive card, but even then, the White Beard Pirates have dropped in price. So even this guy might be like a dollar at most for a playset. So this deck, probably 10 bucks to build, and then another $10 for the sleeves. So honestly, I think it's a pretty good deal for a very cool and interesting leader. And if you're trying to get into the One Piece guard game, this is probably the easiest leader to learn because they're all vanillas. You can't really mess it up. And uh, she's the only one that has really abilities. And of course, Ezos is a searcher. He's just a blocker. And then 2,000 plus search. So I think this is like, probably the easiest deck to learn. And yeah, it's probably one of the cheapest decks. So if you want to get someone into the game of One Piece, this is the way to do it. But anyway, I gotta let you all go. Take care. Don't do anything stupid. And I'll see you all in the next one. Expect some more uh, set four action. Uh, we had the pre-release uh, just yesterday. I was going to make a video on that, but I decided not to. I'm building decks, actually. Uh, the next video will be actually on Purple Crocodile. We got the new Crocodile cards. But uh, that's a whole other uh, video on its own. So we'll just have to wait on that. Hope you all enjoy. See you all next one. Bye bye <laughs>